Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 194 in the series of basic math. <coughs> Today we'll have our 14th lesson in the series of 15 on the topic of probability. The problem for today, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that if you were to pick one integer, if an, one, if, if an integer is selected, if, if an integer is chosen at random from all positive two-digit integers, there have to be two-digit integers and we are only contemplating positive integers, not negative integers. All positive two-digit integers, if you were to pick one number at random, what are the odds that the chosen integer has seven in the tens place? Has seven in the tens place. Well, oh, very first thing we have to figure out is how many such integers are there? How many two-digit integers are there? How many integers are there that have two digits? Positive integers. Well, that's very straightforward, very simple. If you, if you look at it here, 1 through 100, 1 through 100, of course, everybody knows there are 100 integers. It's very simple. We also know that the first nine, first nine have only one digit. They only have unit digit. We're looking for two digit integers, so they don't count. We also know the last one will have three digits. That doesn't count. So we start our story with 10 and we finish our story with 99 and 10 through 99. This is where people make mistake because they just simply subtract 99 from, they just subtract 10 from 99 and they end up counting 89. There are not 89 integers, there are 90 such integers. 90 such integers. Why? Because the last one does not count which is three digit integers and the first nine do not count because they have one digit integer, a one digit unit rather. So if you subtract the nine plus one ten from one hundred there are ninety of them. Now let's make a list of all the integers that are going to have seven in the tens place. Seven in the tens place. Let's begin then. So how about uh, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, and 79. We're not going to go up to 80 because 80 has 8 in the tens place. There you go. How many are there? Looks like there are 9 of them. Did we miss something? Did we lose out something? The answer is yes. We left out 70. We left out 70. There are 10 of them in fact. As you can clearly see there are 10 such integers that have 7 in the tens place. So that's it. We are done. So the odds of picking a number that has a, that has a 7 in the tens place where the 10th ten place is 7, is simply 10 that you can see here out of 90 or 1 9. The answer is 1 9. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. The next one is asking us, what are the odds that if you were to choose one number, one integer at random from all positive two digit integers, what are the odds that the integers that we pick has, has at least, at least one seven in tens place or the unit place. At least one seven, do you understand? At least one seven. The language is very important. It does not say, it does not say what are the odds of picking a, an integer from uh, from all the two digit integers that has either that has seven either in the unit place or or tens place it does not say either it says at least one seven we need to have at least one seven it doesn't matter which place it, which means it does not rule out a possibility it does not rule out a possibility that we may end up with a situation we end, we may end up picking a number at random that has seven in the unit place and the tens place that possibility is not ruled out and if you want to look at this in the Venn diagrams, uh, from the perspective of Venn diagram, it looks like this. Here are all your numbers that, uh, let's, call, let's call them 10 digits, and here are all the numbers that are unit digits. For 10 digits, we already know they are right here, 70 through 79. 70 through 79, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, and 79. There are 10 of them. How many are there? How many are there? that have 7 in the unit place. 7 in the unit place. Let's make a list. 7 in the unit place. 17, 27, 
37, 47, 57, 67, 77. Eighty-seven, ninety-seven. How many do we see? You see, two, four, six. It really doesn't matter how many there are. Well, actually, it does matter because we eventually we're going to have to count it. But anyway, that's the list here. Do you see? Uh, do you see the complication? The complication is that the complication is that there is going to be one number that appears in both lists. It, uh, this number right here, seventy-seven, appears as a something that has a seven in the unit place. It also appears as something that has a 7 in the tens place. It is counted twice. Since it is counted twice, you have to take care of that. It is double counted. It is a common element. Since it's a common element, that common element goes here and we need to, we need to get rid of it here. Now, the reason I'm doing all this thing is because I want you to make you, I want to make sure that you understand it from the, pers from, the point of, uh, from, from, from the point of view of doing a probability problem. This is a very simple problem, but understanding the concept is very important. How do we show this work? In the context of the formula, in the context of uh, doing the probability work, is very simple. Right here, what we are looking here is we need at least one seven in ten plus or the unit place. So we're looking for a probability of uh, either t is equal to seven or u is equal to seven. Here's a situation where t is equal to seven, ten digits is equal to seven, and here is a situation where the unit digit is equal to seven. And we have common element. We have common. We have we have some elements that are common. Here, there's only one. But the point is that the, this is the punchline. Okay, pay attention. The point is that because of the fact that there is an overlapping area here, there is some, there are some element. In this case, there is one element that is common to both. In the language of probability, we will say that these two events are not mutually exclusive. These two events. These two events are not are not these two events are not mutually exclusive even though even though the problem does not require this much work I'm just giving you a little lecture one more time on the concept of mutually exclusive what does it mean for two events to be mutually exclusive mutually exclusive means that if one happens other cannot happen. We talked about it many times before. This is at least the fourth time when we are discussing the same concept. One more time slowly. Mutually, exclu mutually exclusive means that if one event takes place, the other cannot. That is not the case here. Just because, just because the number that you happen to pick at random, if you pick a number at random and you tell me that the number that I picked at random has a 7 in the unit place, does not mean that it is impossible for it to have 7 in the tens place and vice versa. If you close your eyes and pick one number at random among all the two digit integers, and we know there are 90 of them, if you were to pick one number at random from all the tw uh, 90 integers, two digit integers, and if you pick one at random and you tell me, you tell me the number that you picked here just now has a 7 in the tens place. But just because it has a 7 in the tens place does not rule out the possibility that the number that you happen to pick also may have 7 in the unit place, namely 77. That is the common element. And when, they are, when there is a common element, we say that these are not mutually exclusive. And since these are not mutually exclusive, we cannot simply add the probability of these two events. We, can simply not, we cannot simply add the probability of this event and that event. We have to subtract the portion that is double counted. We have to subtract it once because it's counted 77 first as a member of 10 digit integers, or as a member of integers with the 7 in the 10 digits, and that 77 is counted one more time as a member of integers with 7 in the unit place. It's counted twice. Because it's counted twice, we have to subtract it once. And this is how we show our work. So it's going to be the odds of picking 7 in the tens place plus the odds of picking the 7 in the unit place minus the odds of picking the unit and tens place equal to 7. Odds of picking a number that has a unit digit of 7 and, and the 10 digit of 7. And that's your answer there. That's what we are done. In other words, uh, this is a very long, very roundabout way of saying that you cannot count something twice. We have to count 77 only once. So here's what we're going to do. How many numbers that you see there that have 7 in the tens place? Right here we counted them. There are 10 of them. So it's going to be 10 of them plus, so that's this part here. 
And that's, that's this part. I'm going to circle it here so you can see it. So we just did this part right here. Ten of them. Then how many of them have unit digit of seven? Unit digit of seven is right here. And how many are there? Two, two, four, six, seven, eight, and nine. There are nine of them. But as you can see, as you can see, we are counting 77 in both cases. We are counting 77 here as one of the ninth, and we are counting 77 here as one of, one of the tenths. 70 through, 19, 70 through 79, there are 10 of them right here. And 17, 27, 37, 47, 57, 67, 77, 87, 97, there are 9 of them. Since this 77 is counted twice, it's counted here and here, we have to take away 177, minus 1. We have to take away 177 because it's counted twice. We take away 1. And that's what we're talking about. This one that we just took away is this part right here. This part right here. That's the one. That's it, we're done. So the answer now is 10 minus 10 plus 9, which is 19. 19 minus 1 is 18. 18 over 90. We already know there are 90 of them all together. That's it. So it's 18 over 90. 18 over 90. We divide top and bottom by 9. We end up with 2 over 2 over 10 or 20%. Question was, what are the odds that if you were to pick one number at random from all the positive two-digit integers, so the number that you end up picking has at least a 7 in the unit digit or a 10 digit? And the answer is, the odds of such an event occurring is about 1 out of 5, about 20%. Let's do one more. One last one. Let's do one, one last one. Where can we do it? I want to squeeze it. Let's do it on the top here. Let's do it on the top here. Part C. Part C says, what are the odds that if you were to pick one digit, or one, or what are the odds that if you were to pick one integer at random from among all the positive two digit integers, that the integers that you have picked has no seven. No seven in either, either the unit digit, unit place, or tens place. What are the odds? Well, that's very straightforward. The work is right here. There is a 20% chance. There is a 20% chance that we may end up picking an integer that has a, that happens to have a seven either in the unit place or the tens place. Therefore, the odds that we end up picking an integer out of this two, two digit integer out of all of these two digit integers, there are 90 of them. The odds that the one that we end up picking has seven in neither the unit place or the tens place is simply. 1 minus, 1 minus what we just did here, 1 minus the probability that it has a 7 in the 7 in the unit place or the 7 in the tens place. And we already know the answer to this guy, the answer to this guy is 20% right here. So it's 1, 100% minus 20%, which is 80%. There is a there is an 80% chance, which of course makes perfect sense. Obviously, it makes logical sense that we just talked about it. If there are two out of five chances that the number that you end up picking has at seven either in a unit place or a tens place, then it stands to reason that there must be three out of five chance, or rather four out of five chance, 80% chance. There must be 80% chance that the number that we pick, pick will not have seven in either places. Okay? Bye now.